From the Woodshed, a casual conversation with Chase Morrill and Ryan Eldridge from Kennebec Cabin Company, the team that inspired the hit show Main Cabin Masters. From the Woodshed is brought to you by Nelma. See the stamp, trust the quality. By Hero Media Arts, connecting small business with new customers. And by Hammond Lumber, your building project partner. Now, from the Woodshed Studios at KCC Headquarters in Manchester, Maine, it's Chase and Ryan. From the Woodshed, I'm Chase Morrill. With me, as always, Ryan Eldridge and hey. Maggie Morrill. Hi, guys. Hello. Our guest today is Chip Gaines, which is very exciting. Ah. We've been uh, working to get him on the podcast for a while, so we'll have a great time talking with him. You can find us at KennebecCabinCompany.com, MainCabinMasters.com, our Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube channel. Don't forget to check out our online store, shop.kennebeccabincompany.com. We always want to thank our sponsors, Hammond Lumber Company, the official building material supplier of Kennebec Cabin Company, Nelma, Northeast Lumber Manufacturing Association, Hero Media Network, and Kennebec Savings Bank. It's early for us today. It is. It's we're... exciting. I wonder, if, I wonder if it's going to play out on the episode. We're going to be chipper and like, <laughs> Maggie, they're probably going to be like, you guys can do it in the morning after this all the time. <laughs> I don't know. I feel a little less chipper doing it in the morning. Yeah, I don't know if you want Ryan after two cups of coffee before it's worn <laughs> off. Maggie's just staring. I think it's kind of nice. You know, you do the podcast, you know it's the end of the day. True. Can relax, but we still got a lot going on this morning. True. It's I'm snowing outside. I'm still trying to figure out which way I'm going to go with water, coffee, beer. I mean, he's kind of the big guy. Like, <laughs> it's only new. He's it's only 11. Kind right? of our boss, yeah, so we have to right? put on a good impression. Yeah. <laughs> I'm probably going to go water, personally. <laughs> Maggie, what about you? You're so funny. It's not my boss. <laughs> you don't have the, you're the big boss. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So you guys had a fun weekend, huh? A little adventure. It's school vacation week. Yeah. I went up to the county for a while. It was a lot. Had you been up but... there before? Nope. They were up there for four days. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. the Class B state meet was held up to Fort Kent, Lonesome Pine ski area, and Big Rock ski area in Mars Hill. Mm-hmm. Which I've never, I'd never skied up there before. It's way up there. It, I mean, it is the top. Like Hot. four hours from here. Yeah, four. Four hours to Presque Isle, then like an extra hour and a half to Fort Kent. Wow. Yeah, but it's cool. I mean, skiing down Lonesome Pines. You know, I mean, you're looking out and across. It's Canada right there. Canada right there. So it was fun. I guess there's a golf course up there. Actually, I know there's a golf course up there. Half of it's in Canada, half it's in the U.S. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it was, you know, we went up there to support. Did you bring the whole family? The whole family went. We even brought George with us. We saw that. Sarah made him a little jacket with a <laughs> with a varsity letter on it. The mascot. <laughs> I know your aunt and I were sitting there like, they must have brought George. But if they didn't, they I, they better know he'd welcome over our house. <laughs> yeah, we left Otis with Mimi Peggy. Nice. But we brought George with us. Fun, fun, fun. Yeah. Yeah, so exciting week. Um, we went up to, with Tom from Manly Handrails, went up to a fundraiser for Senior Spectrums. Where was it? It was at the Senior Spectrums in Waterville. So it was, okay. it was statewide. Yeah. And that was the way in. And we get there like you know, a little after two and they kind of train us. And it was dead for a while. And they're like, oh, but it's going to get busy. They were all this, like, do you got to do this? Got to do that. Sure enough, right before four o'clock to five o'clock. Nonstop. Really? People were coming down from Chisunkuk, from Moosehead Lake, driving really yeah just bringing their fish bringing their fish yeah and so you guys were checking them in weighing them ash and i recorded them and wild bill came with us he helped us record which is good and then yeah. jedi was hanging them up um i got in trouble by ashley because i was very adamant that i wasn't touching the fish and i did you have to touch the fish they wanted me to and i've i'm not a fisherman I, maybe like five times in my life when i had little, like little kids so left. people are fishing all over the state all the state and then they made the trip down. Yeah, from Moosehead, way up north. Interesting. Chisunka. Yeah, and they brought them down. I didn't realize fishing derbies are big. Yeah. And there was one in China Lake, too. Yeah. So every time I say that, it's like, actually, don't, actually be like, don't say that. I'm like, it is what it is, you know? <laughs> and uh, But we had a great time. Tom from Manly Handrails invited us. And then we went out for dinner afterwards. And we met uh, Taylor Davidson's over here. She's our new market uh, social media guru. And your parents were there. We met them. Yeah. Yeah. Were, it was fun. I was supposed to go out, and then I got a little picture from Ryan with my whole family. Like, well, <laughs> and in, in my defense, I didn't go out because I was wearing sweatpants. Right. And I was like, I, 
Oh, I can't be seen. And you have a little guy, Oliver. But they were kind of making it seem like you were acting a little too old for your age, just so you know. Apparently. Yeah. I did. I went home. We put on a movie. <laughs> got the baby, you know? So, I, I think go out for dinner with them sometime and I'll make them happy. Yeah. <laughs> Burn! <laughs> well, you know, after that advice to Taylor, I think it's time to take a short break. Check out this video, and we'll be back with Chip Gaines. Crazy. Hi, my name is Ashley Morrill. I am the co-owner of Kennebec Cabin Company, home of the main cabin masters. We really wanted to be able to connect with our fan base and we wanted to find a space where we could go and feature um, all of the artists and craftsmen that I discover um, through the show. If you see something maybe in the, one of the episodes of Main Cabin Masters, you know you can come into the store and whoop, there it is. We've got a little bit of everything for everybody um, and then some. This is our lighting section. You have these beautiful handmade lampshades. I think every camp needs a hammock. I say that a lot. I think I say it on every episode that every camp needs a hammock. So when you first walk in, one of the first things you might recognize is the canoe bookshelf. One of the first projects that Chase and I built together. The little onesies. Love those, those are my favorite, might be my favorite item. The beautiful art by Helene Farrar. She actually is our neighbor next door. Uh, we're getting new pieces in weekly. Fastest items to always go are these bat boxes. They, they can house up to 100 bats, but you probably already knew that if you watch the show. We've got all the pictures of all the cabins that we've done hanging on the walls. We have all the artists and craftsmen um, that I've worked with throughout the shop. You just really feel like you are, you know, right here with us. So come on in and visit us. We are at 915 Western Ave in beautiful Manchester, Maine. Or you can also find us online at KennebecCabinCompany.com. We look forward to seeing you. All right. And so we are back with our guest, Chip Gaines. Chip, thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, man. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, so I mean, you and your wife, Joanna, are stars of the Fixer Upper franchise, and it was first seen on HGTV. You're also a best-selling author, producer. You've got a lot going on, and last year, you and your wife launched the Magnolia Network, and we were lucky enough to find a home with you guys. So again, thank you for joining us. This is, a, this is great. Yeah, thank you for your time. How many years have yeah. you guys been doing all this? Absolutely. Let me see. Probably going on. I was kind of rowdy. I was kind of a, a, a non-traditional. I went to Baylor University, which ironically here in Waco, Texas. So that was kind of the connection. I wasn't a, a local Waco boy uh, per se. I was uh, born and raised in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and mm -hmm. and probably only till third, fourth grade there. My parents were all Texans. So they kind of, uh, my dad was a football player. So my mom and I, uh, my uh, uh, sister, and I were both born in Albuquerque where he was playing football for the University of New Mexico. He stayed there, started a couple little small businesses. He's similar to me in the sense that he's a, a bit of an entrepreneur. So, you know, he's trying his hand at these small businesses, but they always had a desire to get back to the, the, the great state of Texas. So I'm probably in the third grade. My sister was somewhere around uh, seventh or eighth, and we kind of basically hightail it back to Texas. So even though I wasn't born a Texan, you know, lots, lots of Texas uh uh legacy and blood ran through my sister and I uh both blood and so we ended up back in Texas and uh so here I was basically in the Dallas Fort Worth area pretty traditional kind of suburban upbringing you know my dad worked at that time for uh, uh American Airlines and it's headquartered out of the Dallas Fort Worth area so he was kind of in that ecosystem and I went to a pretty normal traditional public school and but one day I I uh, uh graduated and decided to come to Baylor University, which is in uh, um, in the uh, Waco uh, area, and that was really my first introduction to Waco. But but I had that real kind of old school kind of uh, kind of uh, hard work uh, sort of. I felt more a lot more like a blue collar kid than I probably was brought up as, if that if that makes mm -hmm. sense. So I kind of always had this 
kind of kind of wild hair to start a business or you know do construction i mean i was always kind of drawn to that kind of uh the side of the universe as opposed to as i was studying uh marketing and and business at baylor university most of my friends all wanted to go off and be bankers or lawyers and of course some doctors but most of them wanted to be professionals and i wanted to be i mean this is sort of offensive to the trade but i wanted to be anything <laughs> other than a professional you know i'm sure you guys can relate late. You know, I'm yep. definitely a professional and I, I like to rock and roll and I can hold my own. But, you know, when I think about the industry, you know, it's not your traditional professional industry mm -hmm. with the uh, button up shirt and tie. So, you know, if you include all of those years, you know, early, early when I was basically just doing lawn work and landscape management, you know, I was doing tree trimming and irrigation installation, you know, I was doing kind of remedial, although once you get into the ir irrigation side of the equation, it's not very remedial at all. But, you know, before that, yeah, it was all pretty simple, just kind of if you would work hard and if you'd show up on time, you could kind of scratch out a little living for yourself. So if you include all that, man, it's getting into the 30 plus years wow. now, but a little more formally, uh, we've been at this for about 20 years wow. and it has been the ride of a lifetime. I'm sure you guys can all relate <laughs> yeah. to that idea, you know? Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, none of us really went to college for carpentry or anything like that, but here we are. Right. Well, that, that was kind of one of my questions. You know, what was your background? Because one of the great things about the situation we're in now is that we're a voice and we're trying to get young people in the trades. And we all have yeah. great stories, too, because I am I was an English major. I was going to teach high school. Chase went for something totally different. Liberal At, arts. Ashley kind of went some type of design. But, you know, we all find ourselves <laughs> here today. And, you know, now the trades are so popular and the trades are getting valued. People are actually getting yeah. paid what they deserve. So I think it's a, it's a great time, and um, you know, it's oh, we all have great stories, you know, and it's it's good for kids these days to hear this. Yeah, absolutely, because I think it, as far as at least it, it, you know, when I was a kid, it felt like it was kind of one path or the other path. You either were you went and tried to mm -hmm. become a professional, and it sounds like you guys were all on the same side of the ledger to where it's just like I I was always kind of taught go to high school and then go to college and get a good degree and go work for a big corporation and then climb the ladder and you know do all these things and and to see that there was a whole world on the opposite end of that spectrum for me i just i i appreciate y'all's passion for spreading that kind of a, uh, the word because it's almost like if kids really understood what was possible on this side of the ledger and i'm not even trying to you know say that everybody's cut out for this side or everybody's cut out for the other side but it seems like the other side's got its message down really clearly yeah. and it's real obvious career path and most people sort of find themselves swimming with that group of salmon but man when you see the other side of the uh, spectrum and you're built like we all are and you prefer this side of the spectrum i mean it's a real match made in heaven and i will say my one of my fondest stories as as a young man is when i really set out to become a small business owner and of course again i always circle back it was kind of in lawn lawn care and landscape management was sort of my original passion but as i kind of set out on that trajectory i i'm just so glad i didn't wake up in my 30s or 40s only to find out that that was in fact the path i should have been on the whole time i've got buddies now you know creeping up into their near you know late 40s you know early 50s who are just like man what am i doing and <laughs> and you know you, you're your job looks great. I mean, they say that now. Right. And I was like, well, but, but yeah, it kind of goes both ways because you look at your buddies, they're sitting in a nice right. cushy office and you're like, yeah. oh, all right. That, that wouldn't be too bad. <laughs> the simple life. What was that? Yeah. When it's middle of winter no, and we're no. under camps, freezing our fingers off. <laughs> right. Yeah. Be careful no, what you wish no. for. Chip. Um, Ash and I had the yeah. pleasure of coming down last year, right about in March to spring in the silos. And um, it's amazing what you guys have built. You know, like, and you, like you said, you want to be a small business owner. Like, look what you guys have done. And the biggest part of that is having a good team, you know, which we're, Absolutely. we've noticed and, you know, and smart growth. So did you guys, I mean, you guys have grown quickly, but I feel like you guys have done it smart as well with so many people behind the scenes. So how big is your operation? All these people we don't see. Yeah, well, it's gotten it's gotten big now. You know, we 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 refer to our company as a small business. It's it's really probably technically not. 
Uh, Joe and I, now this is technically accurate. Joe and I are small business operators. That's who we are. That's, that's, that's the, the thread that we view the world through, you know, a lot of people start companies kind of similar to ours. Uh, I'll just kind of be, be general and, and sort of, you know, vague and in, in these sort of general ass assessments, but, you know, and, and they've taken on venture capital at some, somewhere along the way, or <clears throat> they have some kind of seed funding and, and the whole objective is to take it big you know the the end result is some thing similar to what we've we've now accomplished and with joe and i it was never it was never that that simple you know for us it was kind of day by day and one foot in front of the other and back in the early days and i'm sure you guys can kind of relate to this i mean we probably had 10 15 employees total so yeah. it was joe and i plus 10 15 folks and and i mean those folks and us we were in the same ditch you know we were in the grind i mean we were in the mud together and when you when you've got that kind of camaraderie man i mean you talk about teamwork it, it doesn't get any better than that i mean you sincerely feel like a team uh out in the trenches doing really the same work you know one minute i'm i'm in in the physical ditch doing really hard work then i gotta peel out jump in the shower run go meet with an attorney or go meet with a banker and then i peel out of that you know costume and I'm back in the ditches with with the dudes and and so you know I it, we're just so thankful that that was kind of our 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 roots you know and and those roots have have really served us well cuz dozens of those early early employees are still with us to this nice. day nice. and uh uh but we've grown to over 500 employees you know, kind of pre covid we were nearly you know we were at right zero. at 700 and and we've kind of dipped back down to where we're you know not quite to 500 but somewhere between 500 and 550 and but that you know that encompasses a large you know operation we do a magazine of course as you guys know we've got the network we've got the retail operation a restaurant so you know it's it's got a lot of moving parts yep. but big picture we're we have just been so thankful and and so blessed by this whole experience that it's just like looking back in the rear view mirror everybody says you know what was the plan and how do you strategically you know <laughs> develop something like that I'm like bro there was no strategy well that, no that that's kind of my leads into my question i mean there is no roadmap for how to move forward on this stuff you know and right. same with us i mean it's kind of just you know like brian was saying get a good team and make smart decisions but who did you go to for advice, you know, because you were kind of, you know, setting the trend and all that. Who did you go to for advice and who helped you along the way? And what would you give for advice to people who are, you know, kind of just starting out and moving forward? Yeah, totally. I would say you know i kind of speak out of both sides of my mouth on on that particular idea that particular topic first of all my advice is hurry up and make make, make a boatload of mistakes like oh, try yeah. everything in the book you know screw up uh i'm good at that <laughs> <laughs> have i am i stepping on your that's your that's your that's your, that's your spot <laughs> But it's just like, tell people you're sorry, learn how to be honest, learn how to show up on time. But, you know, and so in that whole process, I would argue that that's fast. You know, you're trying a lot of different things and a lot of new things. Again, I, I refer to a lot the landscape business, which introduced me to the home business. I basically made a little bit of money in about a two year span in my early, early 20s. I couldn't have been 21, 22 years old, kind of half half still in college, but kind of also starting this process of, man, I hate school and I want to get out of here as soon as I can. So I started this business here in town. And, and as you start making that money, it's, it's fun. You know, it's kind of an addicting process to kind of start feeling what it's like to, to, to go and do something and bill it and to get the money from it. And then you lose money on one of them. You realize you're kind of scratching your head. Where did I miss it? You know, where did I, where did I underestimate this job? And so you're kind of always trying to work that puzzle in and then to the contrary, you're new. So when you bid a little high, they go with somebody else and you're like, ah, dog, I, I kind of pushed it a little bit too far on that one and wonder where I need to do a pulled back. But when I made that first little pot of money, I invested it in this little house and I just renovated. This was pre Joe and I, we were, we were dating, but we weren't married. And, and I bought these, these few little houses and I was constantly you know, renovating those kind of in the evening and doing this day job during the day. But when I flipped that first house 
And I basically made about on that first flip yeah. what I had made the previous year in the in the lawn uh, lawn maintenance business. It, <laughs> I, it kind of dawned on me, like, hold on a second. You know, I I did this one flip in my spare time, like a side hustle, and I made about what I made last year on my on my entire uh, you know my entire uh, uh, income. And so I I got the bug pretty quick and and jumped in with both feet. But but sorry, let me just land this plane. So I feel like you should do all that stuff fast because you never know which part of this industry you're going to fall in love with. You know, I've got guys that that are welders that build trailers for a living and you go to their shop and you watch them work through this deal and you're just like, dude, this is incredible. Like, yeah. why don't why don't we talk more about this stuff? You see guys on backhoes that, that are operating big, heavy equipment. Again, it's like, where is that? Where is that? You know, where is that 30 minute course in in our educational system? You know, and so you, you just don't know. So you got to try a bunch of stuff. And I would say be fast about that. But then once you kind of get acclimated and you start moving in the right direction, I would say, you know, go slow, man, because you if so many people try to rush to the end, you know, they try to rush to I'm the CEO or they try to rush to to I'm the best that there ever was. Or I try to rush, you know, Tom Brady and guys like that. They're 40 for a reason because it's taken them this whole, you know, 20 years of their career to come to this place that now you can refer to a human being, Michael Jordan, uh, uh, you know, uh, Alex Rodriguez, you know, whoever you want to throw in the pot that these guys are just these great you know role models in that way it was like man that none of that stuff happened overnight and i think that you know in this current generation so many of us are just so anxious to get to the end of the end of the you know the highest rung on the ladder and it's just like i think we all make a lot of mistakes through that process where joe and i were fortunate we were just so content i mean we were making you know 50 grand a year for the first probably 10 years of our uh, you know uh, relationship and lives and then we kind of crept into probably the six figure range and and we were wildly content i mean on the very lowest end spectrum of that six figure range i want to be real clear it's just you know <laughs> normal money but and then i mean and all of a sudden i'm 48 now i just turned 48 in november but in about november what uh november 14th oh i'm and november you know 7th and i'm 48 too Oh, really? <laughs> I knew I liked you for a reason. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> Scorpio's a good looking and funny. I don't know what it is. <laughs> All right, I'll let well, you go. I sorry. don't know if you've ever you've ever done the math on this, but if you back up November birthdays, I run into lots of people and lots of November oh, birthdays. Yeah. And I swear to you, I didn't know this until I was literally in my 40s and somebody kind of was like, ah, you're a November baby. How? You know what that means. Valid and I was job. like, I have no idea what that means. What does it mean? And if you back up the math, it meant our parents most likely uh, probably had us at, uh, at the Valentine's yeah. Day. You're <laughs> spot on the day <laughs> we're very close to it my know? parents were excited and got busy a week early <laughs> <laughs> sorry to sidetrack so go, 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 go fast at the beginning right. and my encouragement is to go slow kind of once you start getting your bearings and, and i'm just so thankful that this success didn't find joanna and i early in my 20s or 30s just for me she's steady steady as the day is long yep. she's yep. got a great head on her shoulder so many uh, incredible things about her so this probably wouldn't have affected her in a negative way but me i mean i would have been arrogant and most likely <laughs> narcissistic and and but probably a lunatic you know well, i don't no, know I, how I think I, that's a really good point i mean you know kind we kind of feel the same way it's you know we're doing something we we would be doing with or without a film crew following us around so mm -hmm. it's easy for us to you know it was easy for us to transit you know have a camera crew following us around you know this is what we do take it or leave it and again it was later in life so it's like you know it, it just felt easy felt more comfortable and i think you're right that if it had happened early on and staying true to yourself yeah it would have been a lot harder you know because we didn't really know you know people in their 20s don't really know who they are yet yeah and i, I think it goes like like i've been thinking a lot about reality tv when i first started out it was like real world and all this stuff but real reality tv and i think the reason that you guys have blazed this trail for us is that people can understand you guys. You're real. You guys are real. You know, you've worked hard to get there. Yeah. You know, people know people like you and, and people like us too. Like, you know, people know us with the people next door. And I think that is like true reality TV and like why people are so thirsty for this knowledge of people and like craftsmen and what people are doing now. Yep. For sure. Totally. Amen to all that, mm -hmm. man. I, uh, 
Couldn't agree more. And to your point, it's like, you know, that camera, there's something about it, even with me, you know, early, I, I've gotten to where I feel a little more acclimated now, but early, early, Joe, again, back to my point, she's so steady, you point the camera at her, she's kind of her all the time. So it was a little simpler with me, it was like, I don't know, am I supposed to be funny? Am I supposed <laughs> to be a professional? Like, is this where I'm teaching you how to flip a house and, and make real money? Because it's a passion of mine. Yeah. I don't want you to get into this and 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 get, you know, screw yourself up up or, or lose some amount of money and then and, and somehow feel that that I had kind of sold you a bad bill of goods. So I'm pretty I'm pretty able to communicate those positions. But, you know, when you're talking about point a camera at you and, hey, mm -hmm. say something funny or do something interesting, you know, you kind of always feel a little bit duck out of water, like you're not sure exactly what part of yourself you're supposed to express in all those moments. And so to both of your exact points, man, it had that confusion set in on me in my 20s and 30s, I think it would have been pretty disorienting where both of you have kind of hit on it now. You know, you're in your 40s. It's just like, let it all hang out, man. Just be yourself. <laughs> have fun, you know? And yes. Be yourself. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. I don't know if you know this, like our first season, the first two or three episodes, we were trying to figure this thing out and there was a lot of stop and go, stop and go, and we weren't being ourselves. And finally, like the, fourth or fifth day of filming one of the producers just said because it's all about act outs right they were about getting their act outs and they finally just let us go and our personalities were coming out and there's yeah. there's going to be act outs and we were ourselves and it clicked if, had we not made it to that moment we wouldn't be here right now yeah wow you know, we, you know it was, there was a lot of forcing a lot of situations and stuff like that, that yeah again it's not who we are and... and then they let us go and our personalities came out and like yeah it was of course and we always had an act out <laughs> between the weather us ashley there's something yeah something going on <laughs> totally we've got almost an identical story so that's yeah. encouraging to hear that you guys kind of went through that thing and i will say that's the you know the the great divide between reality television and scripted television which reality is becoming more and more scripted as you both yeah. have kind of alluded to and again lay people probably aren't aware of that and and it's fine you know it's it's entertainment and it is what it is but but when you didn't go into it with that assumption to y'all's point you know it's like hey be yourself because at the end of the day if you're trying to be somebody you're not eventually that's going to break down it's going to either break down in your psyche and you're going to become you know crazy over it or the world's going to kind of sniff you out as mm -hmm. a phony and that'll become obvious but you know the fact that they let you guys run that's been basically bottom line kind yeah. of the philosophy of, of magnolia network is man we want real people doing real things that are important to them and that they do and that they sincerely do not necessarily just uh, host through that experience yeah. as somebody else is doing it you kind of walk through the viewer through that experience as the quote unquote host and it's just like you know that's what we love about this opportunity is yeah. to showcase shows and i mean you guys are at the very top of the the pyramid in our ecosystem to where it's just like man the reason people love you guys is the same thing you're kind of the love you're sharing with me and i appreciate it but you know you're 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 kind of speaking to the to the mirror <laughs> it's right back into you because man yeah. people love to watch you guys be real and watch what you guys are able to accomplish and also watch the challenges and the and the dynamics when things don't go quite your way so you know that's what's that's what's compelling about all this to us yeah well thank you yeah thank you um so sure. I, I did we didn't introduce my daughter maggie here she uh she's been producer on the show from the beginning and you know i know you've got a big size family with younger kids you know i've got my kids are teenagers now I'm just curious how you balance, you know, your private life, your family life with your public life and how much involvement do your kids have? And is it by choice or forced? Like I, because forced... Maggie doesn't want to be here right now. <laughs> she tell us all that. <laughs> Maggie, how do you like it? Do you like the cameras? Okay. Do you like the pressure or do you like being uh, behind the, behind the scenes more? Um, I don't really mind it. It's definitely like, getting less weird i would say out of all my siblings i'm probably the most used to it except for my brother <laughs> but like he definitely wants the camera um but yeah no it's not bad well i love that she said quote unquote less weird that was the that was the, the kindest thing she could say about this whole experience and i will say i love that answer it's it's kind of sums it up for our family it's definitely becoming 
less weird, <laughs> but it's uh, it's just a, it's just a strange thing, you know. Mm -hmm. And the more people I meet that are in the business, and I mean meant to be in the business, famous people, you know, in the traditional sense most of those individuals wanted that they were excited about that they knew something about fame and they were drawn to it and i use fame again kind of as a loose uh oversimplification but obviously success and the money and all the things but you know you can go become a a, 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 a successful business person and fame isn't typically a part of the equation you know even in modern day it has become that for people elon musk you got mark cuban you got jeff bezos you got guys that are wildly successful and that's really the whole gig they're wildly successful and that's just that's it that's what they've been able to accomplish but because of the you know the media and social media and the elements that we have available in modern days that we didn't have even in our early childhood 80s and obviously preceding that you know these guys become celebrities in their own right i mean they're movie stars but they're not you know they're not movie stars they're <laughs> right. business people and so in that vein you know joe and i feel a lot more like that we're really business operators we're business owners we're 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 excited about business and then we film when we have to and when we need to and and sometimes we get excited about even the filming elements of it i don't want to belittle it as, as it's all negative but i mean the way you guys described it was pretty clear this is what we're doing and if there's a film crew that needs to tag along well then tag along if you're not going to tag along well we're doing that thing anyway mm -hmm. You know, we're still doing that job, whether you've got the cameras on us or not. And I don't know, I, I hope to really, in my uh, full sincerity and full transparency, I hope that that becomes clear and clear, you know, that that the people that are hosting things and that are and that are and that are kind of in the scripted side of this ecosystem just become a little more confident that that's true about what it is that they're doing and then those of us that are on the other side that really do fit in a traditional style uh, reality television kind of mold and concept that that becomes clear because where we got a little dazed and confused through it and i think even the kids a little bit was you know, I don't know. I mean, do the kids need to be a part of this? Do they not? And and for sure, we've gone through that mm. that cycle where yeah. at the very beginning we had a production company. And again, I'm not throwing them under the bus. I think it was a great strategy and, and we didn't even mind it. We were kind of naive and and dumb, really, to be frank, enough to be like, let's have the kids be involved. But then as the kids got into fourth and fifth seasons and they're getting a little bit older in age and now they're getting recognized out in the out in the wild, you know, mama bear came out and papa bear. And I'm like, I don't know that I want my kids to be visible in that way unless they want to be visible yeah. like yep. that. If this yep. is the yep. career path that they want to be on and they choose to go this route, well, then I want to be the biggest cheerleader for them, just like as if they had picked up tennis or piano, mm -hmm. you know, let's go. Let's go make you the best in those. Yeah those those spaces as, as you could possibly be but you know none of my kids were really drawn to it in that way and so joe and i started kind of realizing man do we have to have the kids involved in this particular thing and that and and as we push back on that obviously the answer could be yes sometimes and no other times and so you know that weird feeling that you described maggie is definitely normal <laughs> <laughs> and I want to encourage you. It's just you know, you go out to dinner one day and nobody knows you except for somebody that you owe fifty bucks for. A, for a <laughs> that you that you that you shorted them on, and you know, two sides to every story. You you thought you were justified for the various reasons, and of course they disagree. They they think you owe them that fifty bucks, and then the next day you go out and a hundred people notice you for a hundred different reasons, unrelated to anything that you do for a living. You know, business or uh you know professionally speaking i mean it's like you know it takes you a second to kind of get mm -hmm. your head on straight and to get acclimated to that but my my kids have been great we've kind of insulated them in a lot of ways that we're you know proud of in some ways but knock on wood the proof is not 100 percent quite in the pudding once they get into their 20s and 30s yeah and, yet yet you know. to be seen oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah i think you made all the kids happy Mag maggie sees she has it out and you have to stay for this season of podcast that's right that's and right and fletcher can roll right in absolutely absolutely <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we do have a few fan questions for you that Maggie will ask you. I know because I have a million things oh, to talk about. But we have to go I to know. the fan questions. All right. Are you ready? Yes, sir. These yes, are, these are the best. When you are. All righty. Uh, first question is from RJ Rondini. <laughs> Any chance we will ever see a Chip and Ryan demo day? 
This would be the best tag team duo ever. Oh yeah, buddy. And I didn't even that was I didn't even know our connection before that in November. <laughs> but I, I don't see why not, man. We yes. we've got plenty of projects. Yes. I'd love to get up to Maine. You know, we've been through Maine, but never in a real uh a lengthy uh fashion. So I need to get up to y'all's neck of the Absolutely. woods. Absolutely. Come on, you I'd open invite. You guys can show us how you do it up up there in uh in the woods. Right. <laughs> I, I don't know if I speak for myself, but I'm starting to feel it. You know, 48, like the readers are coming out a little bit, and the morning I'm not going as quick. So I'm definitely slowing down on demo, but my thing with demo and like a lot of the work we do is it's not gonna be fun. And that's what I tell the guys. Like I get myself this mindset, let's let's just make the most fun out of it, you know? It's gonna sure. stink, but you know, at the end of the day, it's gonna be a warm shower. If you're at 21, it's gonna be a cold beer, whatever you guys want, jump in the sure. lake. Let's just make it the best it is. You know, and that's why I always just, you know, took demo on like that and all those other <laughs> stupid things. Talking to myself in the head a lot, like just like putting myself in that mindset. <laughs> so yeah, I'd love to Absolutely. do some demo with you someday. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Great question, RJ. Alrighty. Um, this one is from Chuck Mocklin. Main Cabin Masters typically has three to four projects going at one time. When you did Fixer Upper, how many did you have going at once? That that rhythm seems about right to us. I think three to five was kind of our, our sweet spot. And again, we were so green to this whole ecosystem. We were great from the construction standpoint, but construction and television kind of collapsed. Yes, yeah. And I mean, there's a lot of conflict between those two industries and we didn't know that. We were just doing the best we could. So there were seasons to where we would scale that to like 10 projects at a time. And I will say, that that expedited our need to to take a break i mean the reason we took a break yep. after that fifth season was just we were just lit i mean we were burnt out we were exhausted and it was nobody's fault i mean we were all building something and they didn't really know but yep. kind of acted like they did and we knew what we were doing but certainly <laughs> didn't know anything about television so that was complicated and so you know, three three is a is I would argue kind of a sweet spot. Yep. So the fact that you guys said that's kind of your number that yeah. that's pretty amazing. Because if I had to pick a number and say that's the one that'll work and yep. is the most yep. likely to be sustainable, that's probably the number that comes to mind. Five, you know, felt comfortable to us, you know, in, in short stints. Mm -hmm. But when we got into that particular season, and I think it was third or fourth to where, man, we were behind on the season that we were wrapping. Yep. We were trying to get ahead of the season. We were about to go. I mean, we were screwed. Yeah. I mean, we were doing projects. This, this all sounds very familiar. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it is, it's a constant, it's constantly trying to find that balance. Mental health mm -hmm. becomes important too. As yep. you're getting older and you that balance. And like you said, I mean, the film crew, oh, the fil production side of thing has their own schedule that they're trying to meet. And, you know, again, it's always, always trying to strike that balance. I was just thinking, I think we would have been there about season four or five, but the pandemic came in and it kind of, Ashley hates when I say this, but the pandemic opened some opportunities. It slowed things down for us. Right. You know, right. we were able to still work, but it really slowed things down and we were able to work close to home. We and, were able to have our weekends and, and which we didn't realize, you know, before it was always work six days a week and, you know, but looking back after Chip said, I think we would have been burned out. Yes. You know, it, it's, it's nice having weekends off. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah. We talk about that a lot and I know we kind of have to tread lightly because that pandemic was just so tragic yes. and sad yes. on so many levels. But I think you two have both hit on something that Joe and I, talk about pretty frequently and that it revealed some really mm. beautiful things about yep. family and about yeah and about life and work and balance and all of that you know yep. somehow we kind of got off track as a as a culture you know that it was just like busy was always the best option and 24 hours a day yep. you're always available and seven days a week is is great good if it's good by you and you know you wake up and you're just like five days a week feels right mm -hmm. and get, turning it <laughs> off at five or yep. six or seven you know is this feels right you know yeah. and so i appreciate that sentiment because i feel like we've wrestled through some of those you know post-pandemic learning lessons yeah. that i feel like we're kind of wanting to continue to take some of those things that we were able to experience and learn through and move them forward you know hey we don't have to get back to working 100 hours a week you know let's 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 yeah. enjoy our life let's enjoy our kids let's enjoy our communities etc 
yeah. we're seeing that up here like restaurants that used to not we're so seasonally driven like restaurants that used to not dare to take any time off are taking fourth of july week off you know and like mm -hmm. so it was a silver lining and i think it did put us in perspective like yep. slow down a little bit for sure totally yeah any more questions uh yep one last question from instapam3 <laughs> uh what's the next activity on your bucket list oh besides man. coming to maine <laughs> yeah, yeah that's true i'm coming i'm yes. coming to visit y'all great there's a, there's a gal not too far from y'all in freedom maine yes. if you're familiar, but she's she's a show on the network called yeah. the lost kitchen and joe and i are just dying to have a date night in her in her little spot she's got a heck of a story so i need to come up she there does. and do all that. but um big picture i'd say you know we've got an 18 year old boy that's just about to graduate from high school so he's just about to start his uh, freshman year in college here in about you know, six, eight months from now. And so we're just excited to kind of get him launched and yeah. get him situated and acclimated in that. And then hilariously, Joe and I are so dumb, literally. <laughs> I, I, I hope I really hit that hammer or hit, hit that nail on the head because I want to over, anybody can do this. You know, Joe and I can pull all this stuff off. I can show you hard work and a little bit of luck and, and loving on people and treating people the right way goes a long way, I can assure you. So, but we've got this boy that's getting launched on the on the uh, top end of the spectrum of our kids. And then we've got this little four and a half year old boy on the opposite end of the spectrum. <laughs> and I just, you know, we just, we just really want to, my adventure as I, uh, uh, and Chase, you've kind of alluded to this as we're getting into nearly our fifties. It's just, it's just to really make sure that these kids know that we love them. Uh, we we adore them. We treasure them. I mean, we're all busy. And so, of course, there's those moments to where you wish you had more time in the day and you wish you had more opportunities to to do the things. But, you know, I, I don't want them to ever wonder, were we doing those things? Because we actually love those things more than we love them or the relationship that we have with them. And sure, sure, so the sure. new season of life, I'm really passionate about just really pouring into and sewing into those beautiful babies because it's drakey my oldest is now drake we nicknamed drakey just add a y to every name and it becomes your nickname <laughs> um but drakey is uh going off the college it really does you know solidify how short this time is going to be yeah. for proof on the opposite end of the spectrum and joe and i are both just like oh we just want to hold on to every minute and so kind of a corny trite trite answer but sincerely just how do we pour into these kids while we've got them and then as we've launched all these kids off into the universe here in 10 15 years from today well then hey maybe you catch your second wind and you go try to conquer the world uh, you know in a second phase of all this but we really want to make sure we pay attention and, and are attentive over these next 10 15 years that we've got with these kids because once that's over as we all know i mean that's it you know right. i mean they all move on and they get families of their own and you see each other at christmases and, and thanksgivings and and the likes birthdays but you know it's not that intimate experience that we all are blessed to have as as we got these babies under our roof and those kind of things absolutely absolutely well chip thank you so much for joining us what a great oh, conversation. Yeah, we, we really appreciate it. We could talk forever I like know. we said. <laughs> but I want to just say thank you for your time and thanks for like being blazing the trail for us and being an inspiration. And um yeah, thanks for letting me know I can work with my wife and still have a smile on my face all the time. And uh, <laughs> things gonna be good. Yeah, and definitely need to make it up to Maine and we'll uh yeah, we'll have a cabin ready for you absolutely well we appreciate you guys coming all the way down to our neck of the woods last year uh you both mentioned it that you were you were down last uh, year for kind of our network launch yeah. and celebration and all that stuff we really want to start a rhythm where the network family all gets together uh, a couple times uh, whether it be per year which would be great but if not you know at least once every two years some Perfect. kind of rhythm so you guys are always welcome and and I mean it. Well done, and and I'm proud of all your success. Thank that, you. As you know, and I hope you know this, you're really killing it on the network. You guys killed it before the rebrand, which is not an easy thing to try to accomplish to rebrand something and then bring somebody like y'all who existed in that ecosystem and then introduce them to a new new universe. But boy, you guys have done it and made it look easy. And so, well done, and and kudos to everybody up there on the team and. Tell everybody I love them and and uh, give them give them our best, etc. Perfect. We'll do. Thank you. Have a good day, bud. All right. See you, Maggie. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>
Well, after all that, I didn't even have a chance to offer him water, coffee, or beer. I don't think either of you needed a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It all makes sense now. It really he, does. I was like, he talks a lot. Does he talk more than me? <laughs> Yeah, where the demo comes from, all of it, yeah. all of it, all of it. This is, that was awesome. What a great time. Yeah. All right, so we are now on to Project Pointers. It's been a while. Project it's been Point. a while, but we have one. And this one is from Todd and Jolinda Hartman. And it says, in 2021, we purchased a cottage on Holmes Bay in Cutler, Maine. Right now, we enter the home directly into the kitchen area from the porch, and we would like to add a mudroom onto the home. Do you have any recommendations or suggestions on what would be the best way to add a mudroom onto the Ooh, home. This, this is up your alley design. It's solving problems. Yeah. I mean, right off the bat, I would say, can you convert the porch into a mudroom, right? Wouldn't that be the... Yeah. And there it is. Oh, wait, oh, there's a picture of it. It looks just like the Harpswell Cottage almost. Yeah. Doesn't it? Interesting. Oh, look at how those um, sheet of shakes have grayed. So that... For people who wondering, that's a natural grade on the coast cedar shake. Weathered. Weathered. Yeah. And, then, you know, one thing about Maine, you think about Maine's and mudrooms, the, all the old farmhouses. Yeah. They had the main farmhouse, the barn, and it was called the L. Yeah. It, you know, it's kind of like the main, you came in, you right, took right, right to the barn. You summer Usually kitchen, unheated. Yeah. Usually unheated. All right, so that's on a foundation, so we got to deal with that. Yeah. Look, hey, let's do, let's do this two ways. Limited budget and then no budget. Okay. Okay. No budget's easy. Okay. Go with the no budget. Right. Set two posts on the corner of the porch and get as much pitch up to your lower roof without tying into the upper roof as you can. That's limited budget. That's limited budget. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Right. Use what's there. Just cover it over. Yeah. 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 Unlimited budget. Oh, I thought you said limited. No. Okay, that, unlimited that's budget. limited budget. You're right. Use the post that's there. To, don't change much. Tie into the roof. Yes. Unheated, just super basic structure. Unlimited budget. Tear it down. Build entirely <laughs> new. I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> but come off with a different roof pitch, right? Bring a gable in this way. Uh, yeah, I would bring a pitched roof, right? Yeah. Bring it out, and you Boopy. could even do a deck off the side of it, depending on what's in those rooms. Take that deck, flip it so it's parallel to that window. Yeah. Have a gable line come out, get some light in there. Yeah, I guess. On a slab, or you could do on techno posts. Right. If it's on a foundation, you probably want to do it on techno metal posts. Yeah. But something off the front there. And where you have that difference in height that you got to take, you can. Well, oh, shoot. You can see a little bit of water right there beside that car. So maybe if, is there a deck on the, if there's a deck on the front, you really don't need much off the back. Nope. We need a little more info. Let's, uh, yeah, let's, let's give them a call. Oh, perfect. Right. All right. Hot and Jolinda. It's midday <laughs> winter. I bet they're home. Cutler's 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 up there. Down there. Down. Yeah. Up and down. Up. Down east. Up down east. That's a whole other conversation. <laughs> yes. Hello? Hello. Is this Jolinda Hartman? This is. This is Chase Morrill. I'm excited to meet. Yeah, this uh -huh. is Chase and Ryan from Maine Cabin Masters. Hi, Jolinda. I'm, hi, I'm excited to talk to you. I just want to let you know I'm in the corner of a classroom, so if you hear any noise in the background, it's the students. So. Oh, shoot. <laughs> we'll, we'll make this quick then. We don't want to keep you from school. Tell them we said hi. We, th we thought you, we might, you might be on break this week. Huh? No, we, no, we're not on break yet. No, but I'll tell you what, our weather, I think, is a lot better than yours. Yes. Our weather here is going to be 80 today, and I think you guys are having snow up there. Where are you? Uh, we're, uh, we're in Virginia. Man, oh, Virginia. 80 degrees. Lucky. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, all right, let's get right yeah, to I... it then. We've uh, seen some pictures of your cottage. Uh-huh. And we just have a few questions for you. Um. On, yeah. the, on the back side where the existing porch is, you said you walk into the kitchen directly? Yeah. And what is the window, if you're looking towards the water, what's the window to the left and what's the window to the right? The window to the right is over the kitchen sink and yeah. the window to the left is the a bedroom. It's a yeah. bedroom. Okay. I think the classic uh -huh. opening up with a nice hemlock beam. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What's your budget? 
That's the other question. Well, well, Roughly. that just depends because we haven't we haven't decided when we're going to do it yet. But so I guess it depends on we want to we want it when we want it to come in. We want it to be level mm -hmm. with Good. we want to go up in the steps into the into the My, into the mudroom yeah. rather than go down, go up when we go in. Yeah. So we want it to be level with the door. Sure, okay. sure, sure. And is there a deck or anything on the front of the building as well? No, 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 there isn't. Okay. Um, yeah, I think your best option is going to be a gabled roof, or no, gabled roof, right? Yep. A pitched roof into your existing roof line. Perpendicular. Okay, that's what we were thinking. Now, yep. do you think, can we do it like a deck thing, or do we need to put in, do we need to pour a foundation? Um, I think you could get, depending on town codes, you know, yeah. I check with them first, but I think you can get away with doing techno metal posts as long as your posts are below the frost line, so it matches, uh -huh. you know, so it matches up to the foundation. And is this going to remain uh seasonable? Do you guys see yourselves when you retire come up here in the? Oh winter? no no no, we're retiring up there. Oh so. okay, then I'd say. Yeah, that's a tough one. We we have about I have about five years before I retire. My husband has seven, and so in the, that last couple of years is when we're going to do a lot of the work because my husband wants to put in a garage as well. So, but no, it's, oh. right now it's season. Well, where's the garage going to go? Is it going to be? In oh, it's going to go off to the side. Not it's gotcha. going to go off to the okay. side. It's not going to be connected. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Well, if it, I mean, if it was yeah. me and you're going to live there in the winters and be up there a lot, I think foundation. You know, open it up with yeah. a beam, get a lot of sun in there. Because which way is north? I don't know. <laughs> which which way does the sun come up? Direction. Does the sun come up on the ocean side? The, probably the to the sun left? Comes up behind, the sun comes up behind us. Gotcha. Okay. Is it a full foundation underneath the camp? Cottage? Yes, it's, it's, got, it's got a basement. Yep. So, I mean, you wouldn't necessarily have to do a full foundation. Yes. You could do a frost wall. Yep. But at least you would have that additional layer of stability and insulation. So that mm -hmm. you know, and you could open it up, but you'd have to heat it. But opening that up might give your house a bigger sense. Well, of we heat want bigger. to heat it because yep. we want to be able to come in there, take our coats off, take our boots off, yep. you know, maybe put the dog stuff up there and then go into the house. Yeah, I think coming off with a gabled pitched roof that, you know, that would allow you to come back away from the cottage as far as you want, mm -hmm. you know, to buy you as much space mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you could enter through the gabled end again. So. No matter if you put your garage on the left or right, it wouldn't matter. But you want to think about that. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna we're, we're gonna put it off to the side because yeah. this the garage keeps building. Every time he talks about it, <laughs> it gets bigger and more elaborate. Well, so he can never build it big enough. Tell him that. <laughs> huh? He can never big it build it big enough. Yeah. No, he wants a place to go tinker when he retires. So smart man. And but, you almost want to offset it to the if you're looking towards the water again to the right so that. You know, if if you leave that bedroom window open, you know, don't don't encroach yeah, on the wants, bedroom window. Yeah, because yeah. we want to leave the two windows open. Yeah. We don't want to take either one of the windows out. So. Yeah. 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 I mean, you could do a yeah. nice little gable pitched roof right into that. Come straight out and. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think. All right. Yeah. It looked well, really that's good. what we were thinking, but. I just I thought maybe this would be my opportunity to talk to you two gentlemen because I've been watching you for years. Well, thank so. you so much. We appreciate it. Yeah. And yeah, you, my my. Mm -hmm. You can tell the kids in your class that you just followed an interview with Chip Gaines. Oh well, you know what? I was telling my the teacher I work with. I was like, I think Chip Gaines is on today, and I think I'm following you. Him. <laughs> Literally. So, I'm so excited. We just interviewed because I, I watch your yeah because I watch the podcast every week and it's pretty impressive. You know, I've had your from the woodshed T-shirt for oh, years. Thank you. And, fantastic, fantastic. So yeah, and I even the first year after we bought the house, um, I came through Manchester, and I didn't realize I was even in Manchester till I stopped <laughs> to get gas, and I was like, oh my god, I'm in Manchester. And I was like, well, maybe I should stop. I was on my way home, but it was brutally hot, and I have three dogs, and they're not the best behaved ones, so I wasn't <laughs> going to bring them into this. But I drove right by your place, right, thinking by it, and I was like, but it was just too hot, and those dogs would not behave. I well, you know where we're at so. now. Yes. Yes, I do. So we will get there at some point. Well, fantastic. Thank you very much for well, chatting with us. And keep us updated right. on your well, project. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. And you guys are just great. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Have a good day. Oh, all right. You too. Thank you. Bye. Bye.
How funny is that? <laughs> Kids in the class, like, <laughs> she's under with what? <laughs> Who's Chip Gaines? <laughs> What's made Cabin Masters? <laughs> <laughs> Well, all right, there you go. And hopefully our advice helps and keep those project pointers coming. That's Podca- a good one. Yeah, podcast at maincabmasters.com. We and- just combined two th- sorry, we just combined two things. It's it's true. Our family pro- good job. We're evolving. We're our, evolving. The producers of this show are really you know, they're coming around, <laughs> they're evolving as well, like stepping it up again. All right, and we are on to some fan questions. All right. This one is from Raina Wendell. I'm curious what drill you would recommend for household use. Of course, a cordless is preferable and one that is light enough and easy to handle. Also, do you leave it charging all the time or do you charge it for a few hours before use? Good question. That is a good question. I mean, we use DeWalt. I mean, but our stuff is contractor grade. And, you know, when you get one of those 60 volt batteries on it, it's heavy. Yeah. Stay away from those, Raina. But the, I I would recommend a cordless impact driver. Yep. yep. Um, Dewalt, Very versatile. Dewalt does make a cordless impact and just a regular standard drill combo kit. Um, I think they do smaller ones like a twelve volt. Yeah. So if you know if you were worried about weight of it, twelve volt it still has plenty of power, plenty of torque, plenty of strength. It just isn't as big and doesn't require as big batteries. So that would help weight wise, but. And if you're gonna think, if you're gonna pick one of the over the other, I would definitely go with the um, impact. But you got to think about, about your bits because you can true, get true. You can get you know wood bits and metal bits, but you have to have a chuck on them. There's yeah, be- because the, yeah, the impact has the quick connect where it's got the hex end to it. So you you know a standard screw, a standard drill bit wouldn't necessarily fit in it. But like Ryan said, they do make ones that fit. And then as far as the leaving it charging all the time, or our batteries last a long time. Yeah, I mean, I think once the battery's charged, it sh- it holds a charge. Yeah, quite a while. We don't charge them up until they de- until they die. But yeah. if, you, if you only had one battery, maybe. But we always have two, so. Yeah, I don't. I, it won't hurt it leaving it on charger. No, because chargers, you know, the chargers have it built in where they'll regulate. You know, if it starts getting low, it'll charge it back up. It won't overcharge it. It won't damage the battery. So, technology has come a long way. It's crazy. Yeah, I often think about build, like how they used to build houses even forty years ago. Yeah. No thanks. Everything was corded. I mean, just just the impact drivers alone, just doing that work. Everyone had a generator that they tuned up. <laughs> Personal joke. <laughs> Good question, though. Yeah. All right, and one last question from Dale Platnik. With Dixie's new ski shop venture, is he leaving the show? Dixie is not leaving the show. Dixie's up north. Dixie's up north in Rangeley. Loves it up there. Yeah. He uh, used to be a ski tuner way back when. And he worked at a ski tuning and skateboard shop. Oh, yeah. In a... And he had the opportunity, right? Found a, yeah. got a space up there and he's got the equipment. I think they'll, they're will they kind of moving their whole operation up there. Yeah. But you know, we're, we're right down the road, so yeah. And you know, down. things things are slower in the winter time, yeah. and it's what you know. It's kind of his passion, so we'll definitely be uh, taking our skis, skis there to get tuned when he's up and running. Yeah. So if you're up in the Saddleback area or even Sugarloaf, and you want to see Dixie, go over to his ski shop. I think it's called Dixie's Tune Shack. Dixie's Tune Shack. Yeah, right there in downtown Rangeley, Maine. I guess. Yeah, it's right across from the uh, Rangeley Hotel. Tell him to rest up and get back to work in the spring. (laughs) (laughs) All right. We are on to trivia. Okay. Um, This, my last week's question is, what is Edmund Muskie's middle name? Oh, right. I said Fitzgerald. Which is wrong. Uh, (laughs) James. No. Now, is this a, is it a, I mean, they're asking this question because it must be a unique middle name, right? Right. It's probably, it's probably all, I would say it's pretty unique. It's on the side of every building in Augusta. Edmund Maine. <laughs> nope. I don't think you'll get he it. He doesn't have one. No, he does. I don't think you're going to get right, it. All right, what is it? Sixtus. 
S I X T U S. Whoa. Fletcher would have asked us a, ch- a question we at least had a chance of answering. Well, I'm not Fletcher. Edmund Sixtus Muskie. Yep. Sounds very Roman. Interesting. Yeah. Well, do you know what Edmund Muskie is most famous for? No. No. The Clean Water Act. Really? Yep. He was the one who set up the Allagash Preserve and set the standards with EPA for uh, clean waters. And he's got a nice building in Augusta with his name on it. Yes. Cool. Right down the road from Hagen Street. (laughs) All right. And this week's trivia question is? This one seems like it's pretty easy. How many main counties border on Canada? Oh. I'll have to think about this one. I, I'm going to really quickly, I say four. We've got a nice MCM okay, but... main so cutout. After you do the math and look at the globe and you have the right answer, get back to us at <laughs> podcast at so main. Dot com. That one. If you're the first person with the correct answer, you may just get something fun from us. Yeah. All right. I'll draw later. And keep them coming. Yeah. Keep the questions coming. Thank you to our guest, Chip Gaines. That was great talking to you. Good and times. Yeah. Thank you to everybody. Um, if you have more questions or whatever, podcast at maincatmaster.com. We always want to thank our sponsors, Hammond Lumber Company, Nelma, Hero Media Network, Kennebec Savings Bank. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Maggie. And from the woodshed, we'll be talking to you. What do we do now? we got the whole day left. Yeep. <laughs> from the woodshed has been brought to you by Nelma. See the stamp? Trust the quality. Hammond Lumber, your building project partner. Kennebec Savings Bank, helping our local community save, thrive, and grow for over 150 years. And Hero Media Network, connecting small business with new customers. From the Woodshed is a production of Kennebec Cabin Company. See you next time.